Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the MYBC Virtual Bookstore Author Series, coming to you live on the MYBC Consulting Facebook page, later to be downloaded up to Instagram and over to YouTube and uh, posted over on LinkedIn. And I'm, I, you know what, Melody, people often come on to these lives and think, oh, I'm super duper excited. Well, it's the truth. Whenever I get to hang around with a fellow book addict, I say in the most kindest uh, terminology, it makes my heart sing because it's, it's where that you find people in your life that you align with, not just on the front cover and the back cover, but within the pages of the book as well of life. So welcome, Melody Owen. Thank you, Jeanette. How are you? I'm very well. This has been a long time coming from Aaron Sully hooking us up and saying, you should meet Melanie. So shout out to you, Aaron, uh, tonight. Yeah. Also, I'm going to remember at the beginning of this, if you have any questions for Melanie throughout this, I stay present. They're the gift to me. Please put them into the comments on the Facebook page. And Melanie and I just became friends on Facebook. She'll come back and make sure your questions get answered 100%, because this is going to be a fascinating conversation. So why don't you introduce yourself uh, other than your name, like you just did, and where are you, and um, kind of, you know, the standard stuff. Absolutely. So I'm in, I'm Melody Ann Owen. I'm the founder of Author Nation, and I am in Vancouver, Canada. A uh, beautiful city. There's tons of sun today. We haven't had a lot of it recently. Um, so I run Author Nation. It is a community of authors. So people come in with an idea and then we work through the idea in a community and they come out with a published book at the other end. The idea is that they get to retain control of the content and creativity if they wish. Mm. I also help people get traditionally published. I'll help people write a proposal that gets them there as well. Most of my clients want to be self-published. They usually, it's a, it's all nonfiction, so it's usually attached to their business, and that's why they want to retain control mm -hmm. of the, the creativity and the content so that they can work it, you know, as part of their business. So that's essentially what I do. And I have a cat snoozing in the cat oh. behind me. The other little tidbit about me, I have cats, and one of them is sleeping in a cat bed in the office tonight. <laughs> Uh, beautiful. Obviously, your cats had uh, their bedtime story already read to them. So yeah, certainly. Tucked in for the evening. Yes. So there's lots of good stuff there we're going to unpack as a good little interviewer um, does. Where did your love of books start from? Like, why books to create a big business and a community? Yeah, you know, a lot of people, when you ask them this question, it's like, I've always loved to write, and I've always loved, so all of that is true, but but here's that that next piece. So when I, I grew up in a, a home that was uh, tumultuous, let's just say it was not a happy home. And I started reading uh, to figure out how I could move past it. So I actually started reading memoirs of Holocaust survivors, just like, you know, if you've been through trauma, how do you move, how do you go through extreme trauma and come out the other end and, and live a life and move forward. And I wanted to know how you could do that. And I started reading memoirs because that's all there was back then. I didn't find a lot of like teenage, you know, trauma in your childhood memoirs back then. There are a lot, lots more now, but back then that's what I was reading. And while I was doing that, so I dropped out of high school when I was 17, I was missing one credit for my high school graduation. Um, but I just, I, I needed to get out of my house. I needed to get, you know, I need to get away. So I, I started working at 17 to get away. So I thought I'd never go to university. Then one of my bosses, super amazing guy said, you know, there's a community college around the corner. Why don't you just go take night courses? You don't need your high school graduation for that. Started taking courses. I took this English course and the, the professor uh, he was just finishing his PhD and I got something like 98 in that course. And he said, look, why are you not in university? You are an amazing writer. You love to read. Why are you not doing this? You are now a mature student. High school no longer matters. Go to university. So I applied to university and I went to university. So, and, and what did I study? Writing and literature, right? So I studied, I got a degree in English where I'm studying professional writing and linguistics and literature 
And, and so that my, my love of that blossomed. And from there, I had a career teaching, traveling around the world, teaching English, running programs, um, and then I came back to Canada and I've just, from there, I've always been an entrepreneur. I, I ran an English college here uh, and then struck out on my own. Uh, and so it just developed from there. It, it, fascinating. There's, there's so much there. There's, there's, so, there's so much there yeah. that I, I often say that I'm my company core values, connect, collaborate, community, comes by honestly because I'm the middle child of a blended family and we learned how to connect and we learned how to compromise we built our community as a family and and it's it's interesting on how when you take what is inherently I'm going to say trauma is not good but to put that spin on to honor the trauma to give it purpose there that's the that's the right terminology that I wanted Absolutely. to get to on my thought process to, to what you have done today for the written word, for yourself, for others, for your community yeah. is incredible. Like what a living legacy project that you are continuing to work on, on a daily basis. Just incredibly magical, uh, Melody, incredibly magical. Thank you. And, and a lot of what, you know, not talking, you know, trauma is never good. You can raise your children without harming them. It's possible. So yes. trauma isn't a good thing. Let's get rid of that myth, right? You're who you are because of the trauma. Yes. No, I couldn't be this person without it. But um, one thing that really helped me is storytelling, kind of retelling mm. my story. And I actually did a solo show, uh, a 10, 10 night solo show uh, on my story, did a storytelling show. And so I've really used storytelling to retell my story for myself and for the world so that I've, and that was, that's been part of my transformation from where I was to where I am now. And so that also plays into it. Although I don't work with fiction, I do believe mm -hmm. that story is, is like that essence of, of what we're writing, right? We're writing our stories all the time. I had a, a, an author on a couple of weeks back, a couple of months back, who she does write fiction though within the conversations and the scene setting are incredible lessons that had she written it in fiction or nonfiction, yeah. people would have looked at her and went, whoa, that's too like out there in order to, um, no, I could never learn from that. But weaving the threads through fiction, she said, I'm getting, I'm teaching the YA because she's a YA writer, some new skills on how to communicate. And yeah yeah it's it's fascinating on what the written word is able to do and put into action i was thinking about this earlier this week is we often say in relationship words are words unless there's actions and results connected to it and there's got to be such great joy for you that when you help that person with their words that the end result that that happens and the actions that people take after reading the authors that you help the books that they read like there's got to be nothing better than an, an, an author calling you or sending you a message going oh, I just got the most incredible review of my book and, yeah. and you're like and silently you're going I knew it I knew it you know yeah. kind, of, kind of thing <laughs> yeah that's it that's one of my favorite things I think my favorite favorite thing working with authors is just hearing them feel real, you know, hearing that pride in look what I've created, look what I've put into the world, mm -hmm. look what's out there that can now help other people. It's, it's almost like uh, parenting, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you work really hard to bring this child into the world and then they become productive citizens. And you're like, I did it. I, yes. Similar, it's, you know, not quite the same. Books don't take as long usually as child rearing, but um, <laughs> it's the same idea. You have this idea and you think it could help someone and you, you push yourself hard until it's out there and then you see it working and you're like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite piece, whether it's a review or, or just that satisfaction, like I, mm. I've sold books or, or whatever it is. I got a speaking gig, just something that, that, that proof that it's worked right? That somebody is listening. Somebody's learned something. Somebody's life has changed because of what I've done, what I've put into the world. That's exciting. 
so I kind of did a cute little graphic for you earlier that had five mm -hmm. different little spokes on it. So let's talk about some of those spokes that you have in your business. Um, where would you say you started first? What was your first service that you started offering um, out to the world, to your authors, the author nation? Yeah, so interesting. I think the very first thing I ever did was teach people to write and that I did through okay. colleges and universities. I think that's actually where it, where it was born. And when I started working with authors, I, I started, I started a, a group locally here in Vancouver called YVR Authors, because YVR is the airport, uh, the airport code. Um, and I started, we met every month and we did, so I was editing, I was editing and I was, so I, I was editing more than coaching. I was editing at the time. And so I guess that's the first service, but that's not nearly as exciting to me as the community that I built here in Vancouver where we had monthly events. Every month I interviewed one of the community members about their book. And so they got an opportunity to practice being interviewed, talking about their book, answering questions from an audience, but it was a really safe space mm. for them to do that. And then uh, after that, we would have a, a, an educational component. So I'd bring in a speaker to talk about a topic that was going to support authors. I remember once one of the one of the authors came in and talked about awards. She had won an award. Oh. And then another author in the audience said, oh, OK. She became an international award winning author and it changed her life. And so that just that, you know, meeting every month and having those you know, little ideas dropping in every month from authors and educators, and then watching people blossom with their books, either writing them or promoting them or winning awards. That was, I think for me, even though I started editing before that, for me, that was that first like oh, authors and community. Yeah. Like-minded right? people together. Oh, look what we can do together, right? I think for me, right. that was, that. that's that kernel of, uh, that started where I am now with an online auth author community. Uh, okay, because you've morphed this into a really thriving business, and my internet's going a little wacky, so hopefully it's it's going to be okay, and I'm not kind of fading out. Is was there a charge? Because you said you met in person and you gathered, and was there a charge for me to come as an author to come sit at your table? Yes, there was. Absolutely. I charged every meeting. But and, and here's the thing. Um, I shouldn't be telling the world this, but here's the thing. I charged for the meeting mm -hmm. and something nominal because I, I you know, I, I paid for meetup. I paid for the room. Right. You know, so there are expenses in running a community. Right. I had paid for a website. And so I wanted at the very least to have that covered. Uh, and often I would meet clients at the meeting. So, so my business could grow that way. Um, but I did want it to be covered, but if somebody came and I knew they couldn't afford it, no one was ever turned away. Ever. Beautiful. Like, I just don't, I, my values say that when somebody is looking to tell their story and looking to, to, you know, work on something, you don't turn them away. You find ways to support them. I can't do work for free, but I can do something. I can give some things. And so that's mm -hmm. always been where I, where I come from. So yes, I charged about $20 an event. Okay. Uh, if, if somebody came and said, I didn't, I don't have money today or whatever, it's just come on in. Yeah. And I, and I asked that question in, in great honesty and, and truth and integrity is I just know when I share these videos up on my YouTube and people watch it or somebody's watching out there, they're like, Oh, I, I want to do this kind of thing, but I, I, I know I can't do it for free. Is it okay? Will I be received if I just charge a little bit? And they could be anywhere in the world because I have you know people that follow me um, all over the place. So it was important for me to ask that question to know that it's okay to charge a little bit to cover you know cover what you have to do in order to get that person at the table. That's the other thing. There's a there's something about pay to play um, as well that you know that you're paying a little bit you're going to come with them. At least you're going to learn one thing. One one thing. So from creating your community in person. So now morphing your business into what it is today. 
So over this last kind of three, four years, what has your business morphed into be with new services, new offerings, and new opportunities that you've presented to authors out there? Yeah. So I guess this is a COVID story, isn't it? Right? Because, you know, I was... I was pretty happy with the local community. We were growing, business was okay. And then COVID happened and we couldn't meet in person, you know, when, and it knocked my socks off, right? Because mm-hmm. I, I lost this, this base that I had. So I figure when you lose your socks, you put on better socks. Ooh. So, right? So, you know, that's what you do. You upgrade your socks. So I started, I didn't know, I, I didn't really know where it was going. I just said, you know what, I'm going to start a YouTube channel because I just, I want to reach out to people. I have all this knowledge that I've been gaining all these years and I want to share it. I'm just going to start a YouTube channel and we're just going to go from there. And so I did start a YouTube channel and then I turned that into a podcast. Um, And then um, I started working with people and, and started book coaching. And I thought, okay, there are a lot of people who want book coaching, like what I offer. But honestly, when you come to me, as a book coach, it's very expensive. If we're meeting okay. an hour every week and I'm editing your work and I'm putting a lot of time and energy into it, this is thousands and thousands of dollars. Okay. So then I, you know, I had this YouTube channel. I was helping people one-on-one, very expensive. And I thought, how, how do I, you know, and, and I see authors, you know, um, doing things that, don't serve them, right? The, there's mm. can be this predatory world in self-publishing. People spend tens of thousands of dollars and don't get anything back. I've seen that. And so how do I, how do I help people with what I know without charging them the, the big fee of mm. have, dealing like one-on-one every hour? How do I do that? So I thought, okay, I, I start putting my resources somewhere. So that's what I did. I just started writing building resources and putting them somewhere and charging a very nominal fee for that. Okay. And then we started doing weekly writing sessions where every, every Monday at 10 AM, almost every Monday, cause I do, I'm allowed to take holidays, but almost <laughs> every Monday we get together and we write for an hour and a half together. And then we spend 30 minutes just like debriefing. And so from there, it's like, okay, there's all this other stuff because they're like, we want to interact between sessions. And so from there, I built out a community. Beautiful. And so now I, that's, that came, that's where the community came from. And now we have, I'm just implementing author journals. So you can write down every week what you did. I can come in and give you, you can ask me a question. I can give you advice. And so now I can do that big, you know, one-on-one stuff through a community and people can get support that way. And then they can support each other as well. So it's not just, it's not just my time. Other people can say, Hey, I had that problem and this is how I solved it. And then people don't have to spend those, that huge amount of money to get all of the information. It's, it's much more affordable. It's so I'll, I'm, I'm happy to talk about how much I charge. It's $47 a month. And so if you think about it, nice, nice. Right. If you think yeah. about it, if you're going to take a year to uh, a year to do your book, I charge you $47 a month, 47 times 12, you know, whatever. It's about $500. It's, it is, right. I give a discount if you buy for the annual, it's $500 for the year. And so you can write a book in a year. And in that year, you get that community where you get a writing session every week. You write your author journal. There are resources. You, there's a, a question place where if you have a question, you can pop a question and I can answer it. Someone else can answer it. Like, should I buy my own ISBNs? Where do I register them? Um, you know, where do I find a, a cover artist that works in my genre? All of these questions that you could ask without um, paying a, all that money and you're still getting really good, valuable information. So that's, that was my ultimate goal. Uh, once I couldn't just do that because that's what we were doing locally right. for like twenty dollars a session, like twenty dollars a month. Now it's global, and you get so much more in there. And so that that was my that that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just uh, working on on filling that community because this is a little bit more new for me, uh, the author journals and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That that that's tremendous. So from your creation of your authors community, I'm going to say both from your reality meeting and your community that you have online yeah how many books have you helped authors get out there onto the shelves i don't know i couldn't count hundreds 
So people have come to meetings and just said, you know, we don't know, you know, I don't know what to do next. And, and I, I don't want to say that I've helped. I want to say that the okay. community has helped. I just want to change. I just want to be clear okay. because sometimes what I've done is I've said, oh, you're writing a, you know, a historical uh, book on this topic. Well, so-and-so also writes historical books. I don't edit historical books. I don't edit historical nonfiction. So, but this person does, this person has written these books. They have an editor. Why don't you talk to them and they can help you through it. Right. And so right. I don't want to say it's just me. I want to say that together as a community, we have certainly helped hundreds of people. And what I do is not necessarily do all the work, but I, I facilitate that. And when okay. people are stuck, they come to me and I help them find resources. So I normally at this time ask my author, yeah. what are three people that you think should have your book? But I'm going to flip that around sure. and I'm going to put two extra in there and say, what are five genres of nonfiction books right now that the world is just, for lack of a better word, because I can't think of another word right now, consuming or have a great thirst mm. for? Yeah. What I'm seeing right now in the world, and I'm, I'm going to set this aside from the publishing world, but what I'm seeing in the world right now, okay. people are looking to connect. They're feeling mm -hmm. disconnected. I see a lot of disconnect and I see a lot of how do I educate myself? Mm, okay. Right. How do I, how do I figure out what my prejudice, my embedded prejudice, my embedded bias, how do I connect with people? How do I remain healthy mentally, physically, emotionally in this world? And so I'm going to say uh, memoir is really, I, okay. I think, because you were talking about fiction teaching lessons. Mm -hmm. I think memoir is very, very good for that because we were like, oh, this really happened to you? Wow, mm -hmm. right? And what did you learn? And, and, and what is your, your path? And how can, I, how can I find my path through yours? So memoir is okay. one. I think we need a lot more books about um, uncovering our own bias and mm -hmm. recognizing our privilege, right? Mm -hmm. So I, that's, is that psychology, let's call it, you know, psych, books on psychology, books on culture, books on, you know, I, I think those are really, really important right now. And I, I think within that, we can look at the, them through historical context. I think, okay. and, you, you know, having books history books that you have the history, but adding the psychology, like how do we take those lessons from history and stop doing the same thing over and over and over again? Mm -hmm. you know, how do we interpret these historical lessons so that we can move forward, right? I think those are important as well. Um, is that three? Um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna pause you there because there's a, there's a genre or a, I think a very underserved group and that is YA. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So let's cover the last two yeah, in the, the why the YA market. Yeah. Uh, because I think that is more um, it underserved. Number one, but number two, that it's like, oh, I don't have all this technical speak and all the rest of that. There's a genre that just wants to be served. So talk to us a little bit where you think YA in the nonfiction world. Yeah. So interestingly enough, I'm actually working on a YA memoir right now. Oh, okay. So it's interesting that you ask me that because I'm working on a YA memoir. And the reason I'm doing this is when I was younger and I was looking for, I was YA myself mm -hmm. and I was looking for a memoir. They, there weren't as many, right? Uh, okay. And so and now I'm, I'm actually, what I've been doing recently is I've been reading as many YA memoirs as I can get my hands on. I've been reading free verse, poetry, graphic novels. I've just been really diving into to figure out, you know, what's out there and wh what's missing. And this is, this is what, this is what uh, I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of adults wanting to speak to YA readers but they want to speak to white readers from their adult perspective mm. rather than, rather than, you know, understanding where people are when you are right. 16. And so I've written a memoir from the voice 
of a, of a, of a child. It, the memoir starts, I'm probably about 11. And the, the memoir is written from the voice of the child. It's not me remembering back. Oh, I remember when this was happened. It's right. like, I, you are, it's like fiction. I'm bringing you deep into the story. This is happening to me right now. And it's in first person written in that voice. So you watch the voice mature through, through the novel and uh, through the memoir. And I, I think that's what a lot of times that's what YA memoirs need. There's an author who um, I interviewed, I was trying to think of her, her full name. She, um, she wrote a book. It was, she actually, it was really neat. She wrote a book uh, to her children, things that, you know, things that, that you need to know kind of things, things that I, I want to tell you. But she really wrote it understanding where they were from, right? Like she mm -hmm. talked about when adults give you advice and you think, yeah, from your adult perspective, right? <laughs> yeah. And she wrote about that. It was just, it was, it was really amazing. I love, love, love the book. Um, I wish I could think, I'll, I'll think of her name. I tell you what, when you think of it yeah. and stuff like that and find it, plunk it yeah. into um, the, the Facebook page um, okay, I will. Um, afterwards to find it because it, it's yeah. it's just fascinating. And I'd say from my perspective on what I, I do, and I'm not a writer, so somebody please take this idea, is almost the title, three TikToks with a million views don't make a business, um, is like that structured way that I want to reward kids for understanding how they're communicating and their greatest if they're little video editors or storytellers whatever their that that core passion is yeah is that book that's out there to lead them through at their level that they understand yeah in that business planning it's almost like how to play in the adult world without losing myself as a child yeah. um in the process and there's yeah. a lot of adults out there and i'm i'm one of them that are in awe of mm -hmm. what kids are creating for their uh, self self-satisfying this is my existence this is what i can do to yeah. how they are serving up the world with yes. what they're creating out there so that's the book that if anybody's watching this afterwards feel yeah. free. I'd buy the first book because I think it honors the inner child that keeps the creative process going yeah. as well as that support that we all want in, yeah. um, in our creativity. And, and we need to write books like that with respect. Yes. A lot of times adults speak to younger people like, well, I know better. You should listen to me. And I think that's the wrong approach because the, um, we're talking to people who are bright and mm -hmm. interested and doing so much better in many, like environmentally they're, you know, there's so much, there's, you know, my kids are so much further ahead where they are now than where I was when I was their age. And so I think we really need to respect that. But I think you're right. I think there are some core values that are useful and and uh, do I want to be careful what I say, but there are certain you know um, very wealthy people who run, for example, social media platforms who could have who could have used a book like that to help them with their core values as they were building out their brands. Uh, let's leave it there. Um, yeah. 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 Re relationship build versus manipulation. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like what I do when I'm chatting with my authors. Well, Miss Melanie Owen, this has just been an absolutely magical fast 30 minutes uh, with you tonight on the MYBC Virtual Bookstore Authors Series. We'll make sure that um, afterwards, I'll obviously say a great thank you out in words that everybody can see and that you can come back and put that connection, how to join your author community, how to get in touch with you. There could be that person watching that's like, you know what? I've got a big book yeah. and um, and I'm sure you'll you'll take that person on um, as well as a client that you have space in your life and in your business for those that want to take pen to paper, fingers to keyboard, or sometimes voice recorder to uh, to their voice note recording device to get their books out. So last word of wisdom, fill in the blank. Last so you word. want, so you want to write a book, fill in last. the blank. Yeah, last, so you want to write a book. Um, I think that if you want to write a book, you probably have an idea that 
the rest of the world could hear, learn from, and grow from. And so when you think about writing a book, think about sharing your wisdom and your life lessons, which means get raw, get vulnerable. Um, but that said, write from your scars, not from your open wounds, right? Mm. That's, that's my last bit of wisdom. Perfect. Thank you so much again, Melanie, for joining me tonight. I always leave this by saying, grab a book off a shelf, make yes. yourself your beverage of choice, yeah. tuck into the corner of your favorite reading nook with your favorite light, and just take your mind, body, and soul to a new place through the words of somebody else. So enjoy the night, everybody, and see you again next Tuesday with another author edition. Thank oh, you. Oh, no, Jeanette. that's you. Your author nation. I'm the MYBC. Yeah, yes, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> Thank Good you, night, Jeanette. everybody.